Good morning on this first Sunday after Pentecost. At Pentecost, lives were transformed. So come worship with us at St. Andrew United Methodist Church to discover how we can be transformed as a community. Welcome. I am Pastor Lilanthi Ward of St. Andrew United Methodist Church and we are here this morning to celebrate the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms lives and brings new life to all of us. Although you are seeing this on Sunday morning, this worship message and songs and prayers were prepared on Wednesday morning. So a lot may have changed between what we share today and Sunday morning. Which is why I want to invite you to get on our webpage now and join us for worship at a live Zoom gathering for community time, for sharing and praying after our worship together. Also, I want to be sure that you have bread and juice ready to share in Holy Communion. Jesus used everyday bread and juice, so whatever you have at home is fine to use. And if you don't have juice, water is fine. But please don't throw away any leftovers. Either consume it or feed it to the birds, as what you have would have been consecrated by God's Holy Spirit. Well, last Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost, the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on the disciples, and how in the midst of chaos, they received the Spirit of God and was given power to be bold in their speaking and sharing about Jesus. This past week, we have seen and heard a lot of voices crying out and some very bold speeches too. The bold voices of old and the voices we are hearing today are all calling us to live a different way. Today, I want to share with you how the outpouring of the Holy Spirit transformed the community around the early church. And don't we need a transformation in our community today? You see, we need to hear what men and women of God from long ago had to say about how we should not only hear, but obey God's calling for us and how we are to live. So the questions I want to pose for us today is, how can we be the community God is calling us to be? And what prevents us from being that community? I want to invite you to pray with me. Because I too need the courage to speak what God is laying on my heart. I tend to lead with gentleness, although in my head and in my heart I'm burning up and want to shout from the rooftops. I'm not always eloquent with words, but my deepest desire is to have all of us loving God with all our heart, mind and soul and to love our neighbours as ourselves. Lord God, May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be all that you want it to be so that we can give you the glory. Come Holy Spirit, anoint and unleash your power on your people. Words are really inadequate to describe the pain we have seen in our nation that has spread throughout the world. But I discovered 
that there are words of hope written by Ron Allen and Linda McCarrion that I want us to share as our call to worship this morning. God creates people from every race, tribe, tongue, and ethnic community. God calls us to live in community marked by love, peace, justice, respect, and mutual support. Join with me and say this together. Yet, Lord, we draw lines between peoples. We raise barriers and we treat one another with prejudice. In every generation, God raises up prophets speaking forth God's desire for all people to live together in love. And together. Today we come together with the hope that God will raise new prophets whose voices will be heard a new people that will strive to understand and live together in beloved community. May it be so, Lord, even today, even through us. Now I want to invite you to join in singing a hymn that has words from old which are apt for us today. But it's sung to a triumphant tune it's called Filled with the Spirit's Power. Filled with Spirit Power with one accord The infant church confessed its risen Lord O oh, Holy Spirit in the church today Let us hear the words from the book of Acts. After the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and after Peter spoke boldly to the crowd, the outcome was the birth of the new way of living as a community. And I have invited Edie Keese to share the scripture as one who overflows with the Holy Spirit and one who has with her words and actions, strive to build this kind of community. Reading today from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of God to the people of God. How can we be community today? 
I've been listening to many voices recently on the news and on social media, and one person that I heard speaking was a comedian and the host of The Daily Show, Trevor Noah. I was really touched by the way that he looked at the contributing factors that have impacted our society. He began with the coronavirus and the domino effect of events that have transpired after the murder of George Floyd that has led to these protests seeking justice. Friends, we need to come back to the power of the Holy Spirit. It had an effect on the people who heard the message of Jesus and it impacted how they lived and that impacted the community. The change in the community had a huge impact on the society at the time. The Romans lived with authority and with a hierarchy of the rich, the poor and the slaves. But this new community that grew after Pentecost was very different. Did you hear in that scripture? And fear came upon every soul. It got me wondering, why were these people afraid? What could they have been fearful about? What brought on this fear? And then it dawned on me. They were witnessing lives changed. They were witnessing lives that were challenged. They were having to live into a new reality. Old ways of thinking were being transformed. Slaves and masters were equal. There was no hierarchy. All were equal in this new community. All were treated with love and respect and honor. They were loving their neighbor, no matter who it was. Care was extended beyond the family unit, beyond the Jewish community. This was not the kind of way of living they were used to. God was doing a new thing. And God has been trying to do a new thing for centuries. God sent prophets long before Jesus to help people understand the way God designed us to live in harmony. But we didn't listen to the prophets. God sent his only son in the hope that we would listen to him. And maybe for some time we did, like in the early church. But we have fallen short. God sent prophetic voices in our time. I think of Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King Jr. But we continue to fall short and we tend to just care for ourselves. Friends, we are also living in the midst of fear today. Our society is being challenged to consider a way of thinking where those who have been taken for granted matter more. In the midst of the coronavirus, we realize the importance and how nurses matter. How those who work in the hospitals to sanitize and clean the patients' rooms, they matter. Grocery store workers matter. Delivery drivers matter. And for those of you who have children, even teachers matter. You see, we are so used to being a people that walk past these people in order to get to the high-profile entertainers and sports stars. But our world has been turned upside down. So much so that what we have heard most recently is the cry to recognize that black lives matter. 
And I, like so many, others were quick to say, don't all lives matter? But what I've been convicted of is this. In doing so, I have failed to see that I was negating the cry of those who felt injustice most directly right now and for so long. Lord, forgive me. Let me liken it to this. I needed something else to help me understand more of this. When we say that children matter in our life together, in the life of our church, we're stating that we want children in our church. We want them to be part of our life together. The emphasis is totally lost when we say everyone matters in our church. Another characteristic of this new community was that they shared everything in common. People sold what they had and gave to all those who had need. Now they did this willingly, not out of compulsion, and that was because of their love. I experienced living in a community of love when I was in seminary. All of us had different needs and different resources. Some had a car, others didn't. So we shared all that we had with one another. Some would drive and others would cook a meal. And then we would share a vacuum cleaner together. And when we lived in Sylvania, our neighbours, we shared with one another. It could be a chair, it could be a snowblower, it could be sugar and flour. We shared our lives together. They included us in their family because we were just a family of three. Friends, what would it be like if we shared more with one another? Today as the church, we strive to share. And I am grateful for this congregation and many others who have continued to give and to share, not just their money, but their gifts and their talents. It's not unusual for someone to offer help, be it to take them to the doctor's office, to stay with them after surgery because they live alone, to get groceries, to pay for hospital bills or utilities, to take a meal to mow a yard, to paint, or to help with cleaning, or packing and moving. The list is endless. In the same way, could we do more? Absolutely. It's reaching out. It's finding new ways. But then the question becomes, what prevents us from fully being like the early church? We can give readily, but we have a hard time asking for help. Our pride and our need for independence often gets in the way of telling someone, I need help. And this is one of the reasons that prevents us from being the community like in the early church. Secondly, we are not very good at being honest with one another. Because too often we fear judgment and maybe sometimes a little ashamed to ask for help. I truly believe that we are in trouble because we have this notion that we should earn a living and take care of our own. There is a pride 
and a striving for independence. That's part of the bedrock of what we see as vital in this society. But here's what I am wondering, and I believe, that God did not create us to be independent. Neither did God create us to be dependent. We were created to be in community that is interdependent. We all need one another because we are better together than we are apart. We are richer together. We are poor when we don't seek to understand one another. When we think that one person is superior to another. And I think that's why Paul wrote that we are as a community like the body. A body that needs each part of the body. The fingers are needed. The toes are important. The eyes are necessary and so are the ears. And when we dismiss any part of the body as not essential, then we suffer. When we don't give value to each member of our society, be it the black person, the child, the elderly, the teenager, we suffer. And it's time we as a church and as a community listen to the message brought to us by the prophets of old and God's messengers today to work to build God's kingdom, God's community here on earth. Now, there's a lot of issues I know and there are a lot of layers to all of this. And we can have a whole other conversation another day about the economics of a community like the early church. But friends, we have to start somewhere and it starts with you and me. It's a simple way of living. It's a good way of living. But it's also a necessary way for us to live. Jesus came to show us a different way of being community. So let me ask you, will you seek it? Really seek it? Will you work towards it? Can we acknowledge our own prejudices and seek to better understand those who are different from us? I might be brown-skinned, but I live in a white community. So I also have a responsibility to come out of my comfort zone and to seek out and to understand better those who are different from me. We are all needed to mend this broken community with the power of the Holy Spirit. And friends, Let's not forget, we are in a spiritual battle and we better be equipped with the power of the Spirit and with love. We are a broken community and it was for a broken world that Jesus came. And that's why we will be sharing Holy Communion today. And one of the things that Jesus also said was that we should examine ourselves before we came to the altar. And so I want to, this morning, invite you to a prayer of maybe self-reflection, but also assurance. The word shalom is used in this prayer. And shalom is a Hebrew for peace. But thus says the Lord, seek shalom wherever you are and pray to the Lord for your shalom shall be found in the shalom of the community. Lord, 
we find ourselves in exile caused by relationships, economics, and failing health in body, mind, and spirit. But thus says the Lord, Seek shalom wherever you are and pray to the Lord for your shalom shall be found in the shalom of the community. Lord, there are many who feel used by people and systems and sometimes even abused. But thus says the Lord, Seek shalom wherever you are and pray to the Lord for your shalom shall be found in the shalom of the community. Holy God, we thirst for God's promised justice often through swift vengeance. But thus says the Lord, Seek shalom wherever you are, and pray to the Lord, for your shalom shall be found in the shalom of the community. Lord God, we strive too often to protect our families and our interests from any wrath. But thus says the Lord, seek shalom wherever you are and pray to the Lord for your shalom shall be found in the shalom of the community. O Lord our God, we long for the day when passive peace will prevail. But thus says the Lord, Seek shalom wherever you are and pray to the Lord for your shalom shall be found in the shalom of the community. Forgive us, Lord, for our inactions and may we be given the courage for our actions to embody our prayers for the healing of the community and therein find our long-awaited wholeness. And we pray thus in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, O Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and against our brothers and sisters. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to invite you now to affirm what it is that we do believe in as a loved and forgiven community, as a community that strives to put into practice what we believe. In this time of desperation When all we know is 
doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation All is dark, you help us see There is only one foundation We believe, we believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit and he's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that he conquered death We believe in the resurrection And he's coming back again We believe So let our faith be more than anthem songs we sing And in our weakness and temptations We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe that he conquered death We believe in the resurrection And he's coming back again Let the lost be found and the dead be raised In the here and now let love invade Let the church live loud, our God will say We believe, we believe And the gates of hell will not prevail For the power of God has Turn the veil Now we know your love will never fail We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe and he's coming back, he's coming back again He's coming back again He's coming back again We believe As we come to the table, I invite you to have your bread and your juice ready um, with those who are with you or even if you're on your own realizing that you are not alone because Christ who invites us to the table is with you. Jesus when he was with his disciples took bread, gave thanks and then broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You and I both know that Jesus' body was broken in many ways. He suffered and he understands your brokenness in your own place and whatever it is that is hurting you. And he's in the brokenness of our brothers and sisters who are crying out. In the same way, after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, the new way of living. This is the cup that holds shed 
blood of Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. That means, friends, that we are to forgive one another and we are to ask for forgiveness so that we can be part of this new covenant, new community. And so, as we gather at this table and in the table at your home, we pray that God will pour out his Holy Spirit on all of us gathered in community to gather even though we are apart. And that God will pour out his Holy Spirit on this bread and cup and on the bread and cup in your homes. That this might become for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be the body of Christ in the world, so that the world can be transformed by the shed blood of Christ and the broken body of Christ that brings healing. So Lord God, may this cup and this bread be for us, that body of Christ. And may we be new people as we partake of this holy sacrament. Amen. And as you take from the bread, remember that Jesus is seeking to bring healing for you from the inside out. And as you take from the cup, that he offers you healing and wholeness so that you can offer that same to others. Lord God, thank you for this holy sacrament that you've united us with Christ, given us a foretaste of that heavenly banquet. And we pray, O God, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will transform us to be living examples of your love in our families, in our community, and in the world. Amen. Let us rise from the table, faithful God to be faithful people. In this community, let us be people of justice. In this community, let us be people of mercy. In this community, let us be people of peace. Holy God, be with us as we try to be faithful in large ways, and in small ways, so that your eternal community may come in every way. Amen. Our closing hymn is called, We Are the Church. Will you be the church wherever God places you? Because God has placed us in very special places, to be that witness, even when we're not in the building. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many 
many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. May the God who is community be with us as we seek to be a community. May God help us to be real and to find death in weakness and brokenness. May we look at each other with soft eyes and truly respect each other as human beings. May God grant us the gift of an extraordinary love that flows from the heart of God that covers a multitude of wrongs. May God grant us courage and may God grant us peace. Amen. If you are watching this on Zoom, Please stay for conversation and prayer. If you are on YouTube or Facebook, I invite you to go to our webpage and click on the link to join us in Zoom. I will be there in the Zoom chat room, as it were, till about 11.15 to listen, to share, and to be.